Hello, Mia DeBolt here, bringing you more transparency in trading. I'm so happy that you're here, still following me in my journey. And if you're new to this journey, then hit the subscribe button and you can follow me along as I get my seven figure funding. So today is day six of my FTMO account. And I know that I skipped four and five, but I can show you exactly what I did for those two days. So I have 10 minimum days of trading that I have to meet in order to pass phase one of FTMO. So that's kind of what I'm doing on the days that I'm not trading. Trading. And then on the days that I do trade, I will shoot a video like this. So I'm going to review my trade from this morning. I actually took two trades, so I'll review both of them. And then also it's day four of the funded trader. So I am in day four. I only need five minimum trading days for that challenge phase to be complete. So that's what I did today. So I'll do a account summary and recap at the end of this video. So if you want to skip all of the trades and you just want to see where my accounts and ended up for the end of the day, you can always skip down at the bottom and there's chapters and that's something that you can just check out where my accounts are. Okay, so let's dive into my trading this morning and I'm going to kind of explain what I did, what my thought process is and what the results were. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so today, I woke up and I had over seven hours of sleep, which is a rule of mine. So I can't trade on a live account or a challenge account unless I get at least seven hours. So I know myself enough that I need that sleep to be lucid and to really take high quality trades. So it's been a while since I've gotten that much sleep and I have logged a couple of days with FTMO and today was my first day back and it has been since last week that I've taken a live trade on my challenge account. So you'll see that in my results, but today I woke up and I felt refreshed. I was happy to jump on the charts and to look for a trade. My thoughts this morning were that, you know, everything was bearish. I was looking at a downtrend for the morning and I typically like to stick with the trends. So that's what I saw. And when I actually jumped on the charts, you can see that there was a very big bearish move after the New York Stock Exchange open. And around seven o'clock Pacific time, it started accumulating and came back up to a premium which that's something that I like to measure. So there's a premium, there's 50% of that range from this swing high up here, the short-term high to this short-term low down here. So I was expecting this to be targeted and I had some higher time frame targets set. So I had 50% of the daily imbalance. So that's always a sensitive area. And you can see that uh, it actually was a really great target for this morning. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up. This is two trades and this is two times as fast. So this is going to be pretty fast, but I will explain exactly what I'm thinking here. So it did come up. It was pretty aggressive. So I didn't like how aggressive it was coming up, but it did come up to a premium bounced off this breaker and then started coming down. So I have both my eight cap open and my FTMO server. So you can see both of those are active trades right now. Okay. So it's pushing down. I didn't get the entry that I wanted and the entry was a lot higher. So I moved that down to be more accurate. Both of these trades are about the same place of entry and there is different spread. So that's something that I was kind of considering when I was charting. So that's something it bounced off of that 15 minute candle. Pretty happy with that. Looking at, you know, what my drawdown is for the moment. And it did end up kind of oscillating back and forth. I'm reducing my risk to that short term high there. So I don't want it to come back at all. And you can see that I'm a little bit lagged in that with FTMO. So I am going to actually reduce or trim my risk for FTMO as well. So I don't want that structure to be broken. If it's broken, then I'm off sides and I'm okay with that. And that's kind of my thinking process there. So I'm only trimming my risk from here on out. I'm not opening my risk or bringing on more risk than I ought. And this is a 1% trade and it's starting to push down. It's not making the huge displacement that I like to see. So it's making me a little bit nervous in the sense that it's just kind of oscillating back and forth. And right now it's gonna start 
breaking that structure. So I want that one minute candle to be broken and that'll give me kind of the warm and fuzzy. Now, ideally, I want this to really start drawing down and reaching for that short term low. So this kind of retracement back up and filling all of this imbalance is not really giving me the warm and fuzzy. So I'm kind of thinking that this is going to be a very short term trade. So I'm just looking at where that five minute candle is going to end up. If it's going to end up, you know, and just meet that wick, then that won't be a good thing. So it's giving me a lot of great displacement in the last minute of the five minute. So I'm creating some structure points where I'm going to take some profits and I do want to set my alerts. Okay, so that's some really nice displacement. However, it starts getting jammed up and it starts retracing. So this five minute candle where it starts going up and down and starts, I, I would ideally like this to stay open and for it to be a breakaway gap. And so that breakaway gap doesn't stay open. It just kind of stalls here. So that's kind of where I'm creating a short term low here. And if that is taken with a fair value gap, then I'm pretty confident that it's going to continue down. And what I'm doing here is I'm making a partial, so a potential partial. I'm thinking 25% here, maybe another 25% here, and then my terminus target is down here. So if it starts stalling or whatnot, I was thinking that it would be a good idea to take 25% off and have 50% off at the 50% of the daily. But again, it's starting to stall, and this is a five minute candle that you know, barely engulfed it and now it's starting to push up. So I'm really not liking this price action. It's not reacting the way that I want it. It's not keeping this fair value gap open. So just being the newbie that I am to ICT concepts, I'm not thinking that this is going to be a trade that I want to stay in. So that I closed with 0.32 for FTMO and I closed with 0.07 with the eight cap and you can see that I'm just logging this and I'm creating a little folder. I don't know if you know how to stack in trading view, but it's really nice to kind of keep the charts clean. My charts are fairly messy, but that's okay. And I'm okay with that. So I keep a lot of things that are pertinent to where I'm trading now and any old trades I like to close and to make them invisible until I'm ready to see them and back test them. Okay, so this is gonna go back and forth and I'm just going to speed this up and fast forward a little bit through this trading session because I don't take a trade until I do know exactly where it's going. So not quite sure it could go 50-50 either way. So I'm kind of at that point where I'm just going to sit on the sidelines and that's really important to do. If you're not sure and it could go either way, then it's just better to sit on the sidelines till you get more information. Okay, so I fast forwarded this. You can still see it's 7.35 on the 25th. So it's a Wednesday and it's still making very balanced price action. This pink area is a one minute fair value gap that should stay open and it should act as resistance if it's going to continue down. So it does do that. However, there's this price action is just not very ideal and it's not something that I like to partake in. Okay, you can see that it draws down. It would have been a nice short term trade had I kept it through that retracement and through that consolidation and accumulation, but I didn't and I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward some more and you can see I'm still looking to sell, still thinking this might be a seller's market. However, we fast forward to about 750 and there's a macro according to ICT that starts spooling from 750 to 810. And so that's kind of what I'm looking at. And I'm looking at this fair value gap staying open. This would be a shift in market structure if it breaks that high. And so that's kind of what I'm waiting on. So I'm looking at that fair value gap to be a breakaway gap and for that to stay open. So that's kind of what I'm measuring and looking at because these are very, very clean, like trend line. It's making kind of this 
retail channel. And so that's kind of an indication too that this might be ready to make some retail traders not very happy. All right, I'm gonna fast forward some more. Let's keep going. So it does bounce off that little pink one minute fair value gap, leave some open, so that is a breakaway gap. And then here's the indication for me. So remember, I did have a little short-term high here, fairly equal highs, there's a fair value gap right there. And pretty soon there's going to be a five minute fair value gap. So that's what I'm looking at right here. I'm measuring that and it did break that structure. So that's market structure shift. And I'm looking at that five minute fair value gap. Once that five minute candle closes, that's gonna be where I'm looking to enter along. So there are a lot of targets up here. Short term, there's that wick right there that a lot of stops are gonna be at. Also, there's gonna be more stops up here where the London high is. So the five minute closed, it dipped down, created that five minute fair value gap, and then disrespected this one minute fair value gap. And so now that it's traded through, this should act as support. So that's where I'm just kind of watching to see what price action is doing. There's a little volume imbalance. And so let's just continue speeding up so that the five minute closes. Okay, so it consolidates a bit. I'm waiting for that five minute fair value gap to close. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do 30 seconds at a time. So it creates a little bit of a pattern here. There's a five minute candle. And so I'm looking to enter on that five minute candle as it dips down and I'm expecting it to shoot up and take that one hour wick right there. So on the one hour, there's some imbalance right above that one hour. So that's kind of my short term target. And you can see, let's fast forward this 30 seconds. Okay, so I'm setting my trades on both accounts, just ready to pop once it takes that short-term low. Okay, so it took that short-term low. That one minute fair value gap is being disrespected, but not with the huge displacement. It's not caffeinated. I clicked on buy, I moved to eight cap, and I clicked on buy as well. So I'm in this for both of them. I'm starting to journal just what my feelings are and what I'm expecting from the market. So not really paying any attention too much to where that five minute is ending up. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then this is kind of what the trade looks like. So looking, dropping down to the one minute. I want that five minute to be a breakaway gap. So I don't want that to be filled. The 50% of that is pretty much at the bottom of that volume imbalance. So there's a daily volume imbalance that's covered here in the turquoise. And so that's kind of what I'm expecting is just for it to start running up. And thankfully it does do that and doesn't make me wait too long. Okay, so it breaks structure. There's some equal highs here. And I'm just gonna fast forward this because there's not a lot with this other than you know, it's moving nicely. I have some profit already for this morning and I'm really not expecting, like there's a lot of movement over here and some, a 15 minute candle right here. So buy side was my target, that buy side right up there. However, this kind of retracement kind of made me second guess. So that's kind of where this 15 minute order block, if it's gonna continue down, this looks like a retail flag. So I'm susceptible as anybody to retail logic. And so I'm still learning all of the ICT confidence that he has. And so I tune into him and he was targeting that buy side up here. So that's something that gave me a little extra confidence in this trade. However, it was something that I was waiting on here. So because I haven't taken a live trade in a little while, I was really looking to add to my cushion and not be too greedy this morning. So that big push up, I am pretty much going to close it out, I believe. So pretty soon it does come back down, kind of plays around that 50% of that wick on the one hour, which can be a sensitive area. It does create 
a order block and is respecting that in the bodies of the candles. So had I, you know, in hindsight, wanted to do something differently, the thing that I would do differently is probably just take a partial when I got the big push up and then let the rest of the trade continue. Okay, so I'm gonna continue this. It does retrace a little bit, I think one more time. Okay, touches the order block, I believe. So it's looking like on the one hour, there's that order block over there. And I don't like to wait too long for my trades to go. So you can see that I was playing around. That was my terminus target up there. However, when it starts to run, then it starts to run big. So it went jammed right through all of the New York open, jammed through all of that and almost reached our terminus target, but created some resistance here at that 15 minute fair value gap. So that's kind of where I closed my trades, got 0.76 out of it and then walked away. So I closed out my trades and closed out the Zoom. I was done with the morning session. I did honestly come back for the PM session, but I didn't find anything that I was really confident in taking. So I didn't end up partaking in the PM session, which did end up running pretty well. Okay, so what you can see too, I'm just gonna take you over to trading view right now. And you can see that my trade, my original trade is this, the five minute fair value gap stayed open and that market structure shift was a nice one. And so it did reach terminus and it did go all the way up. And I do believe these are the targets next for tomorrow. So it's really high up. It's probably going to take it during the Asian session. However, it would be really nice if it just dropped down a little bit and gave me an entry in the morning tomorrow, but we'll see how it goes. And so this would have been a really nice trade just to ride up during the afternoon session. However, I'm really happy with where I'm at. So let's look at my accounts and this is my F2MO. You can see that I have until the 15th of February. However, I'm looking to complete this in 10 days of trading. So I'm not quite there yet. I'm on day six and you can see that my profit, I have some profit and I did take that buy and I took that sell today. So that's something that I like to look at is just monitor my trades and monitor my profit. So I'm about a third of the way there. So I have 3% on FTMO and then I have 3.2% or so on the funded trader. So I have four out of five days and I'm really looking for this account to be passed here shortly. So 3.28 and you know, my win rate is not important to me. It's really more about taking high quality trades that I feel comfortable with. The other thing I wanted to mention too this morning is that I actually reduced my risk because it was against the morning trend and I wasn't quite sure if it was going to continue bullish. I reduced my risk to 0.5% risk. So that's something that I like to do no matter what. And if I see something that's trending tomorrow that I'm really confident in, I likely will take a 2% trade, but with eight cap and with the funded trader, I am limited with 50 lots. So that's kind of a bummer because typically my stop loss is such that when I do 2%, it's about 60 to 80 lots and that's over the limit. So I have to maximize my trade at 1%. So it's probably like 1.2% or so. I can do 2% on FTMO though, that's unlimited. So that's unfortunately a limitation to ACAP. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I look forward to reviewing more trades with you as I continue my journey. If you haven't subscribed already, follow me down below by subscribing and you'll see all of my trades and everything that I do in order to get my seven figures of funding. And so remember, if I can do this, you can too. This is only a matter of time before I get my seven figures of funding and beyond. And I really look forward to the journey. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you soon. All right, bye.